Let's look at the electron geometry for SO2. That's sulfur dioxide. So when we're talking about electron geometry, we're talking about the number of electron domains bonded to the central atom. So we're talking about the sulfur here. So we have one, two atoms and one lone pair. So one, two, three, that's the steric number. Steric number tells us we'll have a trigonal planar electron geometry. Now this is different than the molecular geometry. The electron geometry, we're looking at just how many things are bonded to the central atom here. In this case, three, so we have trigonal planar. Let's look at this in three dimensions. So we have our two oxygen atoms, double bonded. So there they are, they spread out. And then we have that lone pair. And you can see that lone pair that pushes things down. And we get this shape here. We looked at the molecular geometry, we'd call this bent, where we kind of hide the lone pairs in the molecular geometry. It's a bent molecular geometry. But when we're talking about electron geometry, we count everything. And all of this is in a plane. All three things are in a plane. That means we end up with a trigonal planar electron geometry. Let's go back. So the electron geometry for SO2, trigonal planar. Do note that for the SO2 Lewis structure here, we have more than eight valence electrons on the central sulfur. That's okay. Sulfur can have an expanded octet. Also note, sometimes you'll see this with a double bond and a single bond. The most correct version would have two double bonds because the formal charges would be the lowest. Either way, the electron geometry for SO2, sulfur dioxide, is trigonal planar. This is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.